What does it mean to live out your feminine genius? In the modern world today where there are so many definitions or seemingly there can be so many definitions of what it means to be a woman, how can you truly define being a woman today and how can we define femininity and being a feminine genius in light of what we know about our creator and where we really come from. All of this and more we are chatting about today on The Possibility Mom Live. I am so excited to jump into this topic, but before I do, I need to get something out of the way completely. I am sick yet again. <laughs> if you've been following me and my sad, sad journey of health challenges this past month, you know, you know, and I've been sharing this very candidly over on Instagram, um, my whole family got hand foot foot mouth disease. And if you are not familiar with hand foot mouth, I hope you never are. Um, it is a nasty, nasty illness that typically only shows up in babies um, more seriously and in children more moderately, hardly ever shows up in adults. But of course, being pregnant, my immune system is lower. I got it and it was bad. That's all I'm going to say. Like, oh my goodness. So anyway, we got healthy and we had about a week of healthiness. <laughs> and then my kids went back to school. And of course, we are now entering cold and flu season. And they picked up some other kind of, you know, not so bad a virus. We had we got tested for all the things. It's the common cold and it has wreaked havoc. So if you hear me sniffling today, if you hear a mild cough, that is what is going on. If you could pray for me and my house, <laughs> know that I am offering up some of the inconvenience of being sick for all of your intentions. And please feel free to put whatever intentions you might have right now, wherever you are watching this. And I would be very, very happy to pray for your intentions. On today's episode, we are going to be joined by my beautiful, wonderful, dear friend, Leah Darrow, talking about what does it mean to live out your feminine genius. When you hear this expression, I'm really curious, what are the thoughts that come to mind for you? Are they positive ones? Are they negative ones? It's going to be a really interesting conversation, and I'm so excited to be having it today. Before I welcome the beautiful Leah Dara on, every three weeks I meet with my spiritual director. He is a Catholic priest over in Toronto, Canada. I have met with him in person for many, many years, probably for about five, maybe even more years than that in Toronto when I was living there. And then we moved and he encouraged me to spread my wings and fly. And I was like, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Can't we meet via Zoom? And then he was like, um, you know, like, no, spread your wings and fly. Like, I think it's probably time for you to find somebody local. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. And I basically, in desperation, um, rang him up and was like, can we please, please continue meeting via Zoom? Do you mind? And he was gracious and generous enough to be like, okay, we can keep meeting. And so we have resumed basically all through the pandemic, how we did <clears throat> spiritual direction in the past, um, just via Zoom. And so every three weeks, he gives me something to consider that always challenges me greatly. And I really like viewing them or sharing them with you. And if you follow me over on Instagram at Lisa Canning, I have a highlight where I share uh, the things about my conversations with him. And I'll put the highlight name. I just can't remember it off the top of my head. I'll put the highlight name in the notes um, for this show, both on YouTube and on wherever you listen to podcasts. And today's little nugget of wisdom was absolutely no exception in terms of just being really helpful. And so he gave me three things to consider um, in teachers. And I want to share those three things with you right now. I was sharing with him that I'm starting to take my coaching to become 
very authentically Catholic. I've been sharing with you over the last couple of weeks that I have a motherhood without guilt experience, which is one way that you can work with me that is um, very Catholic in its um, content. And then Wealth Without Guilt is my brand new business coaching experience where I really lean into my faith there as well and encourage you as a business owner to lean into yours. And what I was sharing with my spiritual director today was this concept of self-reliance and how I see it so much in myself that it's a thing that I have to constantly be repenting of. Ungodly self-reliance is the term. And in entrepreneurs, I see it all the more because it is just, when you think about it, when you're an entrepreneur, you are self-reliant. You're not relying on someone else to create your income. You are creating your income yourself. This becomes dangerous for a person of faith, of course, because we cannot be self-reliant. We must rely on God. And so it's a really interesting dichotomy that I think a faith-based entrepreneur needs to be very, very aware of. And so he gave me these nuggets in the context of that conversation, and I want to share that with you. Okay, so number one, that the best teachers teach from experience. And he shared this with me because I was lamenting. I was like, <laughs> I was like, am I always going to struggle with self-reliance? Am I always going to feel like, God, can't this just be easier? Like, can't, do I have to have this much struggle? Do I have to rely on, on you so much? Like, throw me a bone. I'm waving the white flag. And he was like, think of how much experience you now have with growing in, um, the repentance or the the release of self-reliance that you can impart on the people you are coaching. So th I thought that was a really interesting comment. The best teachers teach from experience. Secondly, the best teachers know their human limitations. And I, I think this is also a really interesting one. He was like, Lisa, how long have you struggled with things like this? With like, perfectionism, pride, and needing to control things. And I was like, yeah, basically my whole like adult life, like from whatever I can remember that I had the free will to make decisions, I have struggled with this concept of self-reliance. And he was like, can you not acknowledge that, of course, you've been doing this for more than 25 years or whatever, like whatever time period you want to um, attribute this to, that it would be difficult for you now in your late 30s to just snap your finger and be like, I'm all of a sudden not self-reliant when I've been acting this way for more than 25 years. And so I think this is a really important thing <clears throat> to acknowledge that we we must just be like not hard on ourselves about our human limitations. Just simply acknowledge this is a reality. This is a reality I don't necessarily like need to fight with, but let it inform the fact that as a result of all of this human experience that I have, I'm going to have to kind of rely on a whole bunch more <laughs> spiritual experiences, which brings me to the third thing my spiritual director um, shared with me today, was that the best teachers move away from self-reliance and rely on others. They seek help and resources. And he was encouraging me today to remember that even the pursuit of holiness, <laughs> this is the part where I get really like... Even my pursuit of holiness, I'm like self-reliant about. And so he was like, even the pursuit of holiness cannot be done in a self-reliant way. We are meant to be in communion, both like the communion of saints, but just like the communion of normal people in life who can pray for you, who can walk with you, who can challenge you, coach you, be a friend and all the things. And so I just, I share those things, those three things. Best teachers teach from experience. The best teachers know their human limitations. And best teachers move away from self-reliance and rely on others. They seek help and resources. And I think this is the perfect segue to bring on to the Possibility Mom Live the beautiful Leah Darrow. Now, if you're not familiar with Leah Darrow and her story, she's got a really fun one. She is a former model working professionally in New York. She had a really powerful conversion experience on a set. Like it's just like out of a movie. Her, her, her many parts of her story are so out of a movie and um, has for the last, I don't know how many years, like so many years, been working as a Catholic speaker, um, a content creator. She's the founder of Lex University. She is now the proud owner of a farm. 
<laughs> which I think, honestly, of all those things, is the most compelling thing about her, at least to me, at this point in my life where I'm at and where, you know, what I just, it is so compelling. I encourage you to go watch her stories. There are chickens in it. There are birds in it. There are boots and there are lots of babies in tractors. And I just, I am here for all of it. Welcome to the Possibility Mom Live, Leah Darrow. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Oh, I'm, oh I'm doing. It is so sunny on your farm. Look at where you are. <laughs> it's a day. It's a I'm looking out my window and I see all of my little chickens and my rooster. I'm, they're getting a little too close to the little side road out here, but I'm watching them like almost die. But, you know, it's a farm. So things live and things die here. You are the mama of not only a bunch of children, but now the mama of chickens. <sighs> And dogs. <laughs> it's so many things. So, Leah, I'm so excited to have you on here today. I want to encourage everybody, wherever you are watching this, whether on Facebook or on YouTube, you've got Leah live. So feel free to type in your questions. What we are chatting about today is what does it mean to live out your feminine genius? You have just created a brand new course for the platform that you manage, LuxU, with the beautiful Lisa Cotter. And I am just so curious, where did this come from? Why did you guys feel like now was the time to launch into creating content around feminine genius? Yeah, thanks for asking. So. You know, Lisa. Uh, Lisa created this course um, for Lux University, and it's 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 a robust course. It's on the feminine genius, which is a a phrase that was coined by John Paul II, uh, Pope Saint John Paul II, many years ago. And he was really coining this phrase in a in a in a retaliation, so to speak, a bit to the second wave feminist movement that was happening across the world, and this movement that was trying to almost bring down women to this level, um, to this place where they were just completely uh, neutral. And there was nothing, like they could do everything a man could do, but at the same time, there's nothing very special about them. And it, it, it kind of had like this double-edged sword, this, this, this idea that the you know, second wave feminists were really putting out there. And so to combat that, um, to combat, the fact that uh, women do have unique gifts and talents that are that are they're specific to being a woman. Um, John Paul II began to speak to women in his Wednesday audiences, and he began to talk to them about their feminine genius, this genius of how God has made you as woman. He has made you so incredibly beautiful and special. Um, but also, not just that you're special and you get a trophy and go home and feel great about yourself, but you have gifts and talents as a woman that contribute to this world that are meant to be shared and to make this world more fraternal. And so he's coined this phrase, feminine genius. Lisa Cotter is one of those women who has studied this for so long. She probably is uncomfortable with the, with the title, but she's really an expert on this. And she really dived deep into this. It's 12 lessons that are in her course. It has a workbook. It's got quizzes in it. It's great. And so that's all available right now in Luxu. We felt that it was really important to talk about it now because... The idea of what it means to be a woman is so confusing and it's been euthanized by our culture of what it is to be a woman. And now we're saying that even a man can be a woman. And I'm here to tell you that, that no, you can't. Um, I know that's controversial. I know that that's going to be crazy, but I don't, I just, I can't believe that that's controversial at this point. So we wanted to create something. We wanted to put out there a way where women could come to a place where they would be able to really understand what this concept um, is of feminine genius and then how to practically live that out. Like, what does it mean? How, how, like, how is it defined? And then how do you live it out in your own unique life? And let me tell you right now, it's not a cookie cutter version of being a woman. That's just not what we're about. We, I don't think you need to have, I don't think you need to always wear a dress and, and ha wear high heels and, and bake all day long. I love dresses, I love heels, and I love baking, but that doesn't mean I have to do them all day long, all day together. Being a fem, like expressing your feminine genius is being comfortable with who God has made you and expressing that through the tr truth of Christ Jesus. So I have a question for you because you have made this radical move from, I mean, you lived kind of not like city before, but you, you, you really have moved to a full on farm with like all kinds of apple tree or, or fruit trees. And, and it, again, the chickens, I remember 
you know, you and Ricky were at our, our, at our home not too long ago. And Ricky was describing to me this contraption that he wanted for your farm for the chickens. And I was literally like, Ricky, like, what is happening? Like, you're going to do this? And he was showing me, he was like, look, look, we're going to build it on YouTube. I was like, what? <laughs> anyway, so what does feminine genius, when you mention it's not cookie cutter, this is what is so interesting to me. When you when you now look at this new phase of your life of being a farmer, a legit farmer, not like a hobby farmer, like a literal, like just like legit farmer, what does feminine genius look like in your near your new life, this new chapter of of your life for your family? Well, there's definitely some more practical or some more like day to day things that are changing in terms of what I do, um, even the clothes I wear, and I I think you know talking about that. I, I'd like to spend a second because this is something that's been really interesting about what God's been revealing to me about my femininity mm -hmm. uh, being on the farm. So there is a tendency to think about femininity and expressing that through one of the maybe most expressive ways that women can express femininity is through fashion. We're very connected to that and, and rightly so it's a whole other conversation, but I get that. Okay. But being on the farm, um, for me in particular, a dress doesn't, it's, doesn't, it's not always as practical as it sounds when I'm moving a chicken tractor and I'm on a tractor and I am uh, working with fencing and barbed wire. And so, this sounds so silly, but it began to, we began to think about my femininity. Okay. So if my femininity is not my clothes, if it's beyond my clothes, put it that way. Of course, it can be a part of it as a way to express. But if it's if it's beyond that, then what is this feminine genius? How am I expressing this for myself and for my children and for my husband? Like, how am I contributing to our little domestic church with my femininity that that presents itself as a gift, as a joy, and something that 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 brings yeah that just brings true true joy and peace to the presence of my family. And I began to, God has really began to work on me about my tone and the words I use and what I'm providing. And, and in terms of the type of atmosphere and environment that I can help create around this little farm and around my little home and the experience that I can happen that is nurturing, that is taking that feminine genius apart, that, that is a part of me that nurturing piece and being able to teach my children some of these tasks and these tools on the farm of things to do with me. And so I guess this is the beauty of, of feminine genius not being cookie cutter is that for me right now, I express my feminine genius and how I am teaching and nurturing my children through farm fresh eggs that they get to go get the egg and we get to make it together in the kitchen. And I'm, you know, I'm teaching them, I'm nurturing them and, and how I speak to them and my tone for that. So I think it, it all works in, in, in a variety of different ways. But for me, God is really talking to me about my feminine genius and my femininity expressing in a different way than it used to when I was living in the city. And, and when I, when I didn't have all, uh, I guess this whole lifestyle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, and, and just to piggyback on that, one thing that the Lord has been like basically banging, clanging gong styles in, in my head is this whole notion of the cookie cutter and being confident that there is something he is calling me into specifically and like super duper specifically and that I just need to like, you know, just like, Blinders fix my up. eyes on him and like that's it just blinders up fix my eyes on him but we can have such a tendency especially where social media is concerned of course mm -hmm. to view the lives of others to put them in boxes to then in turn put ourselves in a box mm -hmm. and this is something you know if you've been listening you know my my, my audience will know i've been exploring this quite a bit uh, i had an amazing conversation with dr janice bradenbach who teaches here at amu on the boxes and what to do with the boxes instead. Like this has just been a big conversation over here in the world of Lisa Canning. And so I think there's there's a there's a relationship I think that needs to be, you know, explored or a connection about the boxes and feminine genius. Because I do believe that feminine genius necessitates no boxes. What do you think about that? 
Yes, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, yes, there's. I think as we're talking, as we're talking about yes, women, and our feminine genius, we have to be comfortable not understanding everyone else's expression mm -hmm. of feminine genius. I say that, you know, with a little bit of a caveat of all that we do, making sure it aligns with the truth of Christ Jesus, with aligns with, um, for me as a Catholic, with my Catholic faith, um, with, you know, the gospel, the Ten Commandments, making sure all of that, and, and that it's not in contradiction to any of those things. And if that's the case, um, then we need to allow saints to be saints and we're all saints in training. And, and so, you know, if, you know, if, if Teresa of Avila was like, you know, Therese, you're doing it wrong. I think you need to, I think you need to get out, get out of your bed, no matter how you feel and you need to go. I mean, everybody's got their calling. Everybody's got their way that they're expressing their gifts and their talents, their actual presence of who they are. And so I think when, like when you were mentioning, when we worry, we spend too much time on social trying to compare ourselves to someone else. And we end up, you know, being, being observant and being curious about that process and just pausing and being curious of why am I doing that? More than likely, it's a red flag that you have a wound that needs attention. And instead of giving attention to someone else in their life, we should really be turning the magnifying glass on ourselves and saying, okay, Lord, it seems like you want me to pay attention to something that I need healing with. Let's get going. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen to that, friend. You posted something today on Instagram that really made me uh, want to have this conversation with you. And it was, um, you were, you had referenced, I forget her name, Charlene Johnson. Johnson? Sh 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 Shailene, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shailene. And how she, she, you know, and I really want to encourage everybody, go to Leah Darrow's in Instagram. We'll post it in the notes. And before they expire, go look at this series of posts that she she was referencing of this this beautiful woman. And it, it just it was a series of posts about our examination of social media. And the second last post that she put on was something to the effect of, what would happen if we spent less time on Instagram and more time with our family? Something like that. And I just was like, ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. I used to have really, really, really good actual boundaries, meaning my phone had timers on it. Mm -hmm. So there were 15 minute, I had a 15 minute chunk in the morning and a 15 minute chunk in the evening. And that was it. And then I got a new phone, Leah Darrow. And then I couldn't figure out how to not sync it with my husband. So for whatever reason, long story short, the 15 minutes was being applied to both of us. And so then he was getting all irritated. He was like, I'm just trying to like check Twitter for the news. Like, why does this thing keep happening? So then I kind of was like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And then of course I never figured it out. And so without that external reminder of like, hey, you've got 15 minute chunks, of course I fell back into past habits. This is something I have long admired about you and I have wanted to ask you. So I'm curious if you want to go here. <laughs> but like, number one, you don't seem to have the problem I have. I don't know. Or like, what? Or do you have a problem? But are you just like, I don't know, like, you just don't look at your phone. Like, so number one, do you have a problem with social media? And then number two, if you do, how did you get to this place that I observe you have which is a place of true freedom around it. Like you use it for what you use it for. But my observation of you is you don't get into these little mind dramas that I sometimes get into um, when I consume social media. So if you feel like answering that, <laughs> the floor is yours. Sure. So um, this was something taught to me many years ago and from, and it was a very different uh, scenario. It was, it, it was a very different scenario. I was writing a book. And I hired a personal editor to write it with me. Mm -hmm. And um, and she challenged me on every flippin' word I wrote. Okay. I'm not exaggerating. Every word was asked this one question. Every sentence, basically, was asked this one question. 
what's the point? <laughs> okay. And I was exhausted by it. It was, it's, it's this book right here, The Other Side of Beauty. Every, every sentence, she asked me, what's the point? Anyways, so I wrote this book about, I guess, maybe six years ago now. That experience I've applied to my whole life now from that point on. And so when it comes to social, when I pick up my phone, when I open up a something I've gotten into, I can get out of it, but I've gotten into a good habit of being like, okay, what's the point? What am I doing here? What, what is the point of going on Instagram right now? And I, and I, and so then I'm able to answer that question. I don't have, I don't have a point. I'm just trying to waste time. Okay. You don't have time to waste. You have, you have a lot of things going on in your life. You have a great life that has exciting people to talk to in it and things to do on the farm. That's not the best use of your time then. Or if my time is, okay, I'm going to go on Instagram. I'm going to post something, then post it and I, and then I get off because, and again, I use the, I use that question. What's the point all the time to check myself. And that's been very, very helpful. I also have a couple tricks that I do on social that keep me out of it. And I credit this to my terrible high school experience. I had a horrible high school experience. It was just the worst, the worst people who love high school. And I'm like, who are you? I don't get you. I love you, but great. Good for you. Um, High school for me was just like the worst of the worst. And I had bullies and I caused my own problems. It was just a mess. And I credit this example of high school to how I look at social now. Because I'm like, oh, I've been here before. I had four years of this. Like I know what high school's like. And now as an adult of being 42 years old and having control over my life, I'm not going to go to high school again. So for me, um, I mute almost everybody I follow. I mute almost everybody I follow. I know this sounds crazy. Um, I only, I, I think my feed, so my feed only consists of the stories that I, or people or accounts that I want to see in my feed. And personally for me, I'm a big fan of The Office. And so all you see on social media is like office bloopers. And also when, I, when I'm on Instagram, Ricky knows, are you laughing at an office blooper? Because I it makes me laugh and it makes me happy for a few minutes and then I get off. So when I go on social, I'm there to post something or to, to add a story or to add a post. Or if I need to check in with somebody like a colleague or you know someone that I'm going to type in their name, I'm going to see what's going on. This helps me also with a weakness of mine from a long time ago with comparison. And I know that if I just sit here and if I look at all of my amazing, beautiful friends who are doing amazing, beautiful things, one of the temptations that the devil's going to do is say, Leah, look what you're not doing. Look what Lisa's doing. She's amazing. And gosh, you should really do the same. And I know that that's a temptation. I know that's how the devil likes to get me. So to honor my friendships, to honor my, my, my colleagues as well, I just make sure that I don't place myself in a position where I'm going to be um, uh, tempted to think poorly of myself or of them for no reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so um, I make it a point if I do go on social, I'm there for a reason. I make sure I answer myself. What's the point? What's that question? And then I've taken other steps to mute out the noise so that I have less distraction in my life because noise is the cause of so many of our problems. There's too much noise in our life. Um, there is noise, audible noise, there's internal noise, there's physical noise, there's political noise, there's religious noise. And we need to be able to silence as much as we can in our own environment, in our own life, within your own vocation, so that you can really hear the voice of God. Amen to that. Do you, I don't know if I ever told you this, I did a 30 day full, my phone became a brick. Like I took everything <laughs> off of it. And the only thing that was really on my phone was like the phone. Like, so I, I was like, I will carry it around with me in case my kid's school needs to call or my husband needs to get a hold of me or whatever. But I literally removed anything you could do on the phone. And I remember in the beginning, I was um, so used to picking up my phone and, and, and doing things that I was checking the weather, Leah Darrow. <laughs> would go to the weather app because there was literally nothing else to do on my phone. And I'd be like, okay, what's the weather like for the next seven days? Anyway, the point I'm raising here is that 30 day experience showed me a lot about friendships mm -hmm. and the people that I felt close to 
because I was like keeping up with their life or whatever. And then the people who I actually had to call old school, like old school call because I was not using my phone the way I used to. And that was a huge revelation for me. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I, uh, I really, I, 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 you know what, I'm just going to figure out when I'm going to do this again. <laughs> I'm going to do it again because it was just such a, it was such a revelation and especially with my relationship. So thank you very much um, for sharing that. We've got so many great comments here. Um, what a beautiful way to take the spotlight off self. I'm honoring my friends by not comparing. And Bernadette says, I like that Leah, what's the point? I will remember that. So I think this is all like very much in context with this feminine genius conversation. And just very quickly, just in case somebody's listening and is, this is in their head. If you had to define that term in one sentence, like, can you? No, you cannot. It's pretty hard. Even John Paul II was was not able to define that. I think that, um, you know, how I understand it and how I see it, uh, and this is just Leah Darrow. So, you know, you just drop that if it doesn't work for you because, you know, whatever. But um, it's honoring the gift of yourself and how Christ has made you and then sharing that gift and how Christ has called you to share that. And so it's an honoring of who we are. It's an honor to be a woman. It is, it is an honor to be a woman. God made you a woman. He made you, uh, he, he made you as a beautiful expression of theology. Like our bodies, like we, as a woman, we have been made with a womb. And regardless if that womb is ever used or not, if it ever houses a soul or not, our bodies relay the message to the world that we have been made for another. Hmm. And there's something beautiful and feminine and Christocentric all, all developed in that. And so to being able to honor, to be like, to see that being a woman is an honor and that what we can contribute and give to this world in our feminine genius through our femininity is something truly healing and beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I want to invite everybody to join me inside of the brand new LexU course, Feminine Genius. And I actually thought it might be helpful to show what you get when you come inside of this course. So it's 12 lessons and I'm just going to flip through them. We've got the introduction, laying the foundation. What is the feminine genius? So Lisa goes into that this was a a phrase coined by um, St. John Paul II and how it cannot be diluted into a few simple words. Lesson four is a universal call. Um, Lesson five is being receptive. Lesson six is on maternity, what Leo was just speaking on. Lesson seven on self-giving. What does that actually look like? Lesson eight on sensitivity. Um, The story of Dorothy Day. Dorothy Day fascinates me. Lesson nine on intuition. Lesson 10 on generosity. And this one I am so excited about. Catherine Drexel, St. Catherine Drexel, has been like a new friend of mine as I have been um, coaching women in business and in wealth and maybe changing their ideas around wealth. So Catherine Drexel has been somebody I've been getting to know recently. Lesson 11 is on fidelity and then lesson 12 on Mary as our model. Leah, if you had to like just make one statement about why people need this course, what would you say? Look at our world, friends. Look at our world. I mean, you want to get real? I mean, people don't even know what it is to be human. People don't know what it is to really like, you know, women don't know, I think, what it is to really be a woman sometimes. And now we have men saying that they're women. There there are, there's a real battle going on. Make no mistake about it. And we have to know what we believe. We need to know our faith. We need to know who we are as Christ Jesus made us and to live that out beautifully and boldly. So yeah, why, why take the Feminine Genius course? Because we all need it. And this world needs us to be fully, fully ourselves, fully, this world needs us women to be fully feminine, to be fully bold, to speak truth, to do the hard things and be who Christ made you to be, honestly. 
so yeah, so we need all all the little help that we need. We we we, we can get. You know, I mean, um, the inspiration, the teaching, the practical tips that Lisa gives. It, she she just did a great job. I'm so incredibly proud of her. Watching her teach that course, I was like, that, yeah, I needed this a long time ago. But even now, um, as I was watching her, you know, make the connections with our faith and then living it out practically. I just like, this is, I'm so happy that I have, I've already taken the course. I've already learned a lot from it. And so can you. I love it. Samantha says it's an awesome course. And she's writing in the chat here that lesson five really spoke to her. And I really want to invite you, everybody join me inside this course. You can grab a link. It's my affiliate link in the description wherever you are watching this, whether it be your favorite podcast app or on YouTube or on Facebook. Leah, any closing words for us today? Oh, geez. You know what? Just uh, a lot. You know, in, in truth, I end my podcast with this, but I very much mean it. Um, whatever you do today, whatever you do today, what is today? Friday, whatever you do today, do something beautiful for God. Do something beautiful for the glory of God, just for him. Just do some beautiful act. Say a beautiful, kind word, uh, even if it's to yourself, but do it for the glory of God and just do something beautiful for him. I love it. Leodero, go have fun doing something beautiful on this sunny Friday. Thanks so much for joining me. Can't wait to hang out with you again soon. See ya. Guys, this woman, she's just so fun. And like, I don't know. Back to my point from my spiritual director, okay? Back to this point. I'm going to go back up to my little fun tech here thing. That the best teachers move away from self-reliance and rely on others. They seek help and resources. This is a part that I really forget about. Like meaning that we need friends to journey with. We need friends to pray for us. We need to pray for others. We are not meant to live in isolation. And so why would we think too that our path to sanctity or our learning about ourselves has to be like isolated as well? Like why not do this with a whole bunch of fun women? Why not do this in solidarity? Why not learn um, and journey and support other women in your path, your unique call? to sanctity. And I just, for me particularly, like I've, I've gotten a bit, a bit uh, into the course as well. What I am currently, like I shared just a few moments ago, except what I'm most excited about or what I'm really exploring is this whole concept of burning the boxes. <laughs> this whole concept of that, you know, as I spoke about on the Possibility Mom Business Summit, um, you can still see the little snippet. We haven't taken it down yet. I usually take them down pretty quickly, but we have, we've, we've left them up. Um, is this thing that Dr. Janice Bradenbach talks about, just what to do instead, how we have these boxes that we might place ourselves in, stay-at-home mom, working mom, you know, side hustle mom, whatever it is, mom, mom boss, girl boss, whatever, that there's like a line in the sand outside the boxes that is fear how we need to jump over that fear line and get out of the boxes and then step into this nebulous shape. And it was so interesting because I was like, you know me, I'm always looking for a definition. I'm always looking for something to put myself in. <laughs> I was like, what is it instead? What do we step into on this other side of this line of fear? And she was like, it's shapeless. <laughs> and so that, what it, that is what intrigues me the most is just this this concept of how can we discover who we are and who we are meant to be. I'm a I'm a lifelong learner. Let me know in the in the in the chat if that is you too. I love learning, but even more than learning, I love applying, right? We can't just learn. We do have to apply. And so I invite you to join me. I'm a proud affiliate of this program. I invite you to join me inside the new LuxU course, Feminine Genius, taught by Lisa Ann Cotter, the whole thing was founded by Leah Darrow, and I'm just so grateful for these, these friends on the journey, these resources, and I think that you're going to love them too. Thank you for spending some time, and if I can ask selfishly, except that it's not that selfish because I will do this for you also, and it, it, <laughs> it helps us all. If you could pray for my family as we recover from yet another virus, um, I would just be so 
grateful for it. And I'm praying and lifting up. You feel free to put your intentions for me um, that I can um, offer in my season currently of discomfort. I would be happy to pray for you. All right, friends. Until next time, cheering you on.